And you guys are live. We're going to call the meeting for Akron City Council to order. Clerk will read the roll. Baylor. Aye. Connor. Aye. Freeman. Aye. Fusco. There it goes. Aye. Kamer. Aye. Lombardo. Aye. McKittrick. Aye. Malik. Aye. Neil. Aye. Amovian. Aye. Samples. Aye. Somerville. Aye. Swirsky. All members are present except Swirsky. We will now be led in prayer by Councilman Freeman. Immediately following our prayer, we'll be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilman Malik. Okay, we'll all pray together. Uh, Father in heaven, we thank you that uh, in the midst of a turmoil that uh, you never forsake us. We're thankful that in the time of our weakness that you continue to be strong. Ask God that you would guide us this evening. We pray these things in thy name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minutes from our previously held meeting have been provided. Are there any additions or corrections? Seeing and hearing none, can we get a motion to approve? Councilman Fusco. A motion to approve. Can we get a second by Councilwoman Connor? A second that. Roll call. Baylor. Aye. Connor. Aye. Freeman. Aye. Fusco. Aye. Kamer. Aye. Lombardo. Aye. McKittrick. Aye. Malik. Aye. Neil. Aye. Amobian. Aye. Samples. Aye. Somerville. Aye. The minutes pass 12 to zero. Before you, you have the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Councilman Fusco. Uh, motion to approve the consent agenda. We have a motion on the floor. Can we get a second by Councilman McKentrick? Se second. Roll call. Baylor. Aye. Connor? Aye. Freeman? Aye. Fusco? Aye. Kamer? Aye. Lombardo? Aye. McKittrick? Aye. Malik? Aye. Neil? Aye. Amobian? Aye. Samples? Aye. Somerville? Aye. The consent agenda passes 12 to zero. We'll now move into our old business. Rules, Councilman Freeman. I do believe we have a substitute um, and clerk can read that in. I do. Substitute offered as an amendment offered by Councilwoman Samples and Councilman Swirsky. Ordinance amending and or supplementing Title Three, Chapter 38, Unlawful Discrimination, Section 38.01, Definitions of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Akron and Declaring an Emergency. Councilman Freeman? Uh, yes, the committee met today. Uh, we've been looking at this for several weeks. There were some minor changes made and the committee has asked for suspension of the rules and a favorable report. Any objections on suspension of the rules? Seeing and hearing none, the rules have been suspended. Uh, some minor changes. I would uh, happily uh, defer to Councilwoman Samples. She would have any comments. Um, thank you, Councilman Freeman. Um, the only change really was just to add uh, some information about the Crown uh, uh, Act and what it means in uh, just setting the basis for why this legislation came forward, but um, it was very minor. I only think it was a paragraph long. So um, Brantley added some really great context to the legislation and what part they would play in it um, as far as being the Civil Rights, Akron Civil Rights Commission. And um, I thank him for those, those words and, and their initiatives and what they would be able to do 
Um, and also I want to thank um, my colleague, Councilman Sworsky, who was unable to be here, but um, for uh, adding his name to this and wanting to really uh, put forth some work into this. So I wanna thank him and thank you for um, all the work that was done by the law department um, crafting this and um, asking for its passage. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. The rules have been suspended and the committee's report is favorable. Roll call. Baylor. Aye. Connor. Aye. Freeman. Aye. Lesko. Aye. Kamer. Aye. Lombardo. Aye. McKittrick. Aye. Malik. Aye. Neil. Aye. Momobian. Aye. Samples. Aye. Somerville. Aye. This resolution passes 12 to zero. Item number two, offered by Councilwoman Amobian. Resolution recognizing and congratulating uh, Councilman Russell Neal on his recent election as the new president of the National Black Caucus of Local Elected Officials, NBC Leo, and declaring an emergency. I believe that was on our new agenda. I'm so sorry. All right. All right. You're doing a good job, though. There we go. You're rolling. We're going to get there, though. <laughs> All right. So still in old business, we're going to move to planning and economic development. Councilman Busco. Time on the agenda. Time will be granted. All right. All right, Sarah, here you go. We're moving into new legislation. <laughs> See, I knew that's where we were going. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me try this again. <laughs> Item number two offered by Councilwoman Amobian. Resolution recognizing and congratulating Councilman Russell Neal on his recent election as the new president of the National Black Caucus of Local Elected Officials, NBC Leo, and declaring an emergency. Councilman Freeman. The committee's report is favorable. We're asking for suspension of the rules. Any objections on suspension of the rules? Seeing and hearing none, the rules have been suspended. Uh, yes, I would like to uh, defer to Mrs. Amobian. She brought this in. Uh, congratulations to Councilman Neal. Mrs. Amobian, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It is my great honor to recognize uh, Councilman Russ Neal. And what I really want to say is that this is a big deal. Um, for those of you who've been to NLC, you know that there are five constituency groups and the NBC Leo is the largest of the five. There are roughly 500 members and growing. Mr. Neal was drafted pretty much to this position and decided to take it and was voted on a year ago as president elect. And I just want you to know that if it were not for COVID-19, we would have more than 200 uh, black elected officials from all over the country coming to the city of Akron to view our city and to talk, see the things that we talk about when we go to N NBC Leo meetings. And um, as a result of the COVID, there will be a virtual event and I'm hoping and praying that all the council members will take part in that. But Mr. Neal would have the, uh, the honor of chairing all the events and, be, and presiding as the president for a year. And we congratulate you. Uh, Mr. Neal, because this is a great honor and it's a great honor for our city because essentially he's representing the city of Akron and it's because of all the things they hear about Akron from all of us that attend is pro partly the reason he got this position. So with that said, uh, congratulations, Mr. Neal, and thank you for taking on this challenge. Mr. Neal, president-elect of NBC Leo, uh, Hail to the Chief will not be played tonight, but uh, would like to know if you'd like to make a few comments. Um, thank you, uh, Chair, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would. Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, this council for the opportunity to even be in this position. If you remember, it was a year ago that uh, we had our executive director from the State Municipal League to talk about how important it was for us to be a part of the league so that uh, uh, we could still take leadership within NLC. And I want to acknowledge, uh, I mean, my, my colleagues, um, uh, Ms. Amobian, who's uh, engaged in, in NBC Leo, as well as women's, uh, the women's group, and uh, Ms. Chair Mosley Samples, who sits on the National League of Cities board. Um, we're blessed to, 
uh, represent Akron in this way and uh, it have direct access to not just our congressmen, but other folks on Congress. And now thankfully with the change of the administration, uh, we'll even have an audience at some point in time with the new administration going into the White House representing the different groups that we were with. So I'm thankful for that. Um, and I just wanna say this, um, when I first got on council, I did not understand the importance of being a part. So I've got to thank Ken Jones for reaching out and, and telling me even about NBC Leo and about uh, uh, you know the importance of going to National League of Cities. So I just want to uh, share, and I know that Councilwoman Samples and Councilwoman Amobian can, can attest to this, the network that we make and the access to be able to uh, impact legislation on a national level is huge. And then let me let me say this too. Um, even though it's a National Black Caucus of local elected officials, both Ms. Moby and Ms. Samples will know this. Uh, one of our colleagues who just left council up in Cleveland, Matt Zone, was a member of NBC Leo. It was Matt Zone under his presidency of National League of Cities that initiated Rio, the Race, Equity, and Leadership Council which is the best government practice for cities across the nation on how to deal with institutional racism. Matt Zone, a Cleveland, a white city councilman who was a member of NBC Leo, initiated under his presidency, the race equity and leadership. So we, we all serve a diverse population. So I encourage my brothers and sisters here, get engaged in the municipal league, get engaged in NLC, get engaged in NBC Leo because it has a rich history that even though we may not know directly, uh, when you start to dig and, and study, it's touched all of our lives. So I, again, I, I thank you for this opportunity to share. Thank you to my colleagues for this opportunity. Congratulations, Mr. Neal and uh, Madam Chair, committee's report's favorable. We're asking for suspension of the rules. Thank you so much. Again, congratulations, Councilman Neal. Thank you. The rules have been suspended. I don't know, is there anyone on the floor that would like to put a motion for uh, council as a whole? Uh, council as a whole? Second. Okay. Got, and we got a second. Roll call. Taylor. Aye. Connor. Aye. Freeman. Aye. Fusco. Aye. Kamer. Aye. Lombardo. Aye. McKittrick. Aye. Malik. Aye. Neil. Aye. Homobian. Aye. Samples. Aye. Somerville. Aye. This resolution passes 12 to 0. Item number 2A offered by Councilwoman Samples. Resolution congratulating Donald C. Mullen, Executive Director of Stark State College Akron on his retirement and his many career achievements, wishing him well in, his, in all of his future endeavors and declaring an emergency. Councilman Freeman. Committee met this afternoon. Our report is favorable. We're asking for suspension of the rules. Any objections? Seeing and hearing none, the rules have been suspended. I would defer to any council members that would like to say a word. Uh, please do so at this time. Thank you. We want to start uh, maybe Councilwoman Samples. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilman Freeman. Um, as we all know and spoke about earlier today, Don Mullen um, has uh, been a, a pillar in this community for many, many years, went to the Akron Public Schools, graduated from the University of Akron, um, and kept his, his um, time, treasure, and talent right here in the city of Akron, helping build out um, Stark State and bringing it to Akron, um, along with um, Para Jones. Um, the work that he's done will be forever remembered. Um, he has left uh, uh, his, his mark on Akron. And I just wish him well in his in his retirement. Um, he and his wife, and, and hope that he is now able to go out and enjoy the fruits of his labor. Thank you. Are there any other comments by any other council members at this time? I would like to make a comment. Councilwoman Amobian. Yeah, and certainly I would like to make the move that we do, council mayor and council as a whole. I think Mr. Mullen, if I'm not uh, incorrect, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tara, he was an executive at Goodyear, one of the rubber companies. And after he retired from there, he went to Stark State. 
And he has been the one person that we've been able to contact and, and work with as they have brought this University of College to Akron and stay in touch. Um, and, and with that, I certainly wish him well in his retirement. And I think he has done a nice job networking with us and staying in touch with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. The rules have been suspended. The committee's report is favorable. We do have a motion on the floor for mayor and council as a whole. Can we get a second, Councilman Neal? Second. Roll call. Baylor. Aye. Connor. Aye. Freeman. Aye. Busco. Looks like we may have lost him. I'll go through the rest of the roll call and come back. Kamer? Aye. Lombardo? Aye. McKittrick? Aye. Malik? Aye. Neil? Aye. Amobian? Aye. Samples? Aye. Somerville? Aye. Here's Councilman Fusco now connecting to audio. We'll just give him a minute. Councilman Fesco, we were doing the roll call for the resolution for Donald Mullen. Councilman Fesco, you're on mute. Okay, he's having some technical difficulties. Okay. I, I hear him. He is in the building with us, though. Okay, so we'll move on. Is that a, a yes? This resolution passes 12 to zero. Item number three offered by Freeman, ordinance authorizing the issuance and sale of notes in a maximum principal amount of $2,500,000 in anticipation of the issuance of bonds to pay the cost of acquiring and installing computer equipment for the city and acquiring construction, constructing, equipping, and otherwise improving the city's network infrastructure, including the acquisition of equipment and related software and furtherance thereof and declaring an emergency. Councilman Freeman? Uh, yes, the committee's requested this item be placed on the consent agenda, and I would uh, do well to add that uh, these next few bond issues, uh, Mr. Fricker said he would give us some detail about uh, how the funds are going to be distributed. And uh, if you would have any questions, please feel free to reach out to him this week. We have asked that this item be placed on the consent agenda. Thank you so much. This item will be placed on the consent agenda. Item number four, offered by Freeman, ordinance authorizing the issuance and sale of notes in a maximum principal amount of $650,000 in anticipation of the issuance of bonds to pay the costs of improving municipal buildings and facilities in the city by constructing, reconstructing, renovating, repairing roofs, remodeling, relocating, making site and other improvements, planning and designing facilities and acquiring and installing related equipment. All is ap applicable, des designated or to, to be designated by the Director of Public Service and declaring an emergency. Councilman Freeman? Consent. This item will also be placed on the consent agenda. Item number five, offered by Freeman. Ordinance authorizing the issuance and sale of notes in a maximum pr principal amount of $500,000 in anticipation of the issuance of bonds to pay the costs of improving the municipal parks and recreational system in the city and declaring an emergency. Councilman Freeman? Consent agenda, please. This item will be, will be placed on the consent agenda. Item number six, offered by Freeman. Ordinance authorizing the issuance and sale of notes in a maximum principal amount of $8 million in anticipation of the issuance of bonds to pay the cost of constructing, reconstructing, and otherwise improving certain streets in the city and declaring an emergency. Councilman Freeman? Consent agenda. This item will be placed on the consent agenda. Item number seven, offered by Freeman, ordinance authorizing the issuance and sale of notes in a maximum principal amount of $750,000 in anticipation of the issuance of bonds to pay the cost of certain economic development projects in the city and declaring an emergency. Councilman Freeman. Consent agenda. This item will be placed on the consent agenda. 
item number eight offered by Freeman, ordinance amending ordinance number 83, 2020 passed March 20th, 2020 and ordinance number 312, 2020 passed October 26, 2020, which established the annual appropriation for the current expenses, other expenditures and the capital outlays of the city of Akron for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2020 and declaring an emergency. Councilman Freeman. Consent agenda. This item will be placed on the consent agenda. Item number nine, offered by Mayor Horrigan. Resolution expressing opposition to SB 352 in consideration by the Ohio Senate, which would fundamentally, fundamentally shift income tax collections in Ohio and devastate city budgets across the state and declaring an emergency. Councilman Freeman. The committee's report is favorable. Are there any objections on suspension of the rules? Seeing and hearing none, the rules have been suspended. I'm unsure if we have anyone with us this evening that would like to uh, address this, this very bad idea coming out of Columbus, but uh, uh, I would certainly be open to any comments. I don't know if we have anyone from the administration that would like to speak. Hello, President Somerville and Councilman Freeman and the members of, con of council. This is Tamika Rose and, and on for Mayor Horgan. Um, this is a really bad bill. This would actually take money away from the city and um, decimate, our, decimate our budget, it would be catastrophic to us. So the, city, the big city mayors and a lot of other mayors around the, around the state have um, come together with members of the um, Chamber of Commerce and other um, entities around the state to oppose this bill. So we would just like to have a favorable, favorable vote tonight um, so that we can send this resolution down to Columbus to let them know that we are opposed this bill to um, remove the requirements to allow people to work from home, but still pay their um, taxes to the home office built, um, where, where they are located. Thank you so much. The rules have been suspended. The committee's report is favorable. Roll call. Baylor. Aye. Connor. Aye. Freeman. Aye. Busco. Aye. Kamer. Aye. Lombardo. Aye. McKittrick. Aye. Malik. Aye. Neil. Aye. Amobian. Aye. Samples. Aye. Somerville. Aye. This resolution passes 12 to 0. Item number 10 offered by Fusco. Ordinance approving the, the project petition for special assessments for special energy improvement projects related to the acquisition, construction, installation, and improvement of certain public improvements in the city of Akron, Ohio at 530 to 540 South Main Street in cooperation with the Akron Summit County Energy Special Improvement District Incorporated, approving the ne necessity of that project, determining to proceed with that project, levying special assessments for the purpose of paying the cost of that project, approving a cooperative agreement and a special assessment agreement related to the project and declaring an emergency. Councilman Fusco. Refer. This item will be referred. Item number 11 offered by Fusco, ordinance approving the sale of 4.4 acres of city owned land located in the Firestone Park Firestone Business Park, Cole Avenue Extension to PVC Akron LLC, determining said property is not needed for public use and declaring an emergency. Councilman Fusco. Yes, thank you. The report of the committee is for suspension of the rules with a favorable report. Any objections on suspension of the rules? Seeing and hearing none, the rules have been suspended. Yes, thank you. This is um, in the uh, Firestone Park business area, uh, business park. Um, we've invested quite a bit in terms of seeing to the success. Now we have a business that's uh, um, hoping to grow and expand. Uh, there's four acres that we own. This would equal about $110,000. We typically, we always charge $25,000 per acre. And this is what that equals, $25,000 per acre for the 4.4 acres, equaling about $110,000. So, um, we want nothing but the best for this business park and um, we ask for passage this evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. The rules have been suspended. The committee's report is favorable. Roll call. Baylor. Aye. Connor. Aye. Freeman. Aye. Fusco. Aye. Kamer. Aye. Lombardo. Aye. 
McKittrick? Aye. Malik? Aye. Neil? Aye. Amobian? Aye. Samples? Aye. Somerville? Aye. This ordinance passes 12 to zero. Item number 12, offered by samples, ordinance authorizing the Director of Public Service to enter into an agreement and or legislation with the Ohio Director of Transportation for certain improvements of IR-76, IR-77, and the Princeton Street Bridge and declaring an emergency. Councilwoman Samples. Thank you, Madam President. Um, due to technical difficulties, I need to poll the committee for a favorable report. Um, Kamer. Aye. McKittrick? Aye. Labardo? Aye. Thank you. Um, the committee is requesting consent for this item. This item will be placed on the consent agenda. Item number 13, offered by samples, ordinance authorizing the purchasing agent or their designee to enter into a contract or contracts with the Community University and Education Purchasing Association for the purchase of winter roadway de-icing chemicals, including roadway salt, enhanced roadway de-icer, and liquid calcium, and declaring an emergency. Councilwoman Samples. Thank you, Madam President. Again, due to te technical difficulties, I need to poll the committee for a favorable report. Uh, Kamer. Aye. Kittrick. Aye. Lombardo? Aye. Thank you. Um, the committee is asking for a suspension of the rules. Any objections on suspension of the rules? Seeing and hearing none, the rules have been suspended. Any further comments, Councilwoman Samples? No, Madam President. Thank you. The committee's report is favorable. The rules have been suspended. Roll call. Taylor? Aye. Connor? Aye. Freeman? Aye. Fusco? Aye. Kamer? Aye. Lombardo? Aye. McKittrick? Aye. Malik? Aye. Neal? Aye. Lamobian? Aye. Samples? Aye. Somerville? Aye. This ordinance passes 12 to 0. Item number 14 offered by Kamer. Ordinance authorizing the mayor or his designee to apply for and if awarded, accept and expend grant funding administered by the U.S. Department of Justice Office of Community Oriented Policing Services for the 2020 COPS hiring program to provide funding to hire law enforcement officers to increase the community's policing capacity and crime prevention efforts and declaring an emergency. Councilman Kamer. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to poll my committee to place this item on the consent agenda, please. Uh, Councilman Malik? Aye. Councilman McKittrick? Aye. Councilwoman Samples? Aye. And then myself, Councilman Kamer? Aye. Thank you. This item will be placed on the consent agenda. Item number 15 offered by Kamer, ordinance authorizing the mayor or his designee to apply for and if awarded, accept and expend grant funding administered by the U.S. Department of Justice Bureau of Justice Assistance for the National Sexual Assault Kit Initiative and declaring an emergency. Councilman Kamer. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to also poll my committee to place this, I'm at, this item on the consent agenda, please. Uh, Councilman Malik. Aye. Councilman McKittrick. Aye. Councilwoman Samples? Aye. And then myself, Councilman Kamer, aye. Thank you. Thank you. This item will also be placed on the consent agenda. That concludes our new business for this evening. We will now move into the portion of our meeting that we refer to as our public comment period. Uh, I'm going to ask that you are patient with us because we have received quite a few public comments for this evening as we read those in. This first one is from John Frank, former councilman. In 1983, Stan Hewitt and I had discussions about drilling an oil gas well in the back of the homes on Reynolds Avenue. This was very controversial and a compromise was made. Ordinance 858, 1983, section 16, that all access to the well site be from North Portage Path, section 110, that access from Reynolds Avenue be limited to emergency vehicles only. This compromise made it possible for Stan Hewitt to make millions from oil and gas drilling. Stan Hewitt Hall clearly understood that Reynolds Avenue entrance was for only emergency vehicles and that 
and they should keep their promise. This is from Stephanie Shorey. I recently became aware of two large properties within the city of Akron that are possibly going to be developed into housing units. As someone who spends many hours each week in the neighboring Cuyahoga Valley National Park and Summit Metro Parks, this is very disappointing news. We are slowly losing the few remaining green spaces in Summit County. The proposals for the Tice Road property call for 70% of the land to be cleared for single family homes. The land borders the Cuyahoga Valley National Park and it would be a wonderful con continuation of park land. Developing this land would endanger the future health of the Cuyahoga River and it would have a negative impact on the overall, overall environment, including flooding and erosion. This development would also drive wildlife out and increase traffic near a sensitive area of the park. The Riverwood property is even more concerning as it has already been purchased by a developer with the intention of rezoning it. I hope the city of Akron will reconsider rezoning this property to residential. While the plan includes the restoration of 45 acres of riverfront property, those 45 acres are in a flood risk area and not buildable. So this gift is a laughable afterthought that allows the developers to appear as if they care about the natural state of the area they want to develop. The developer has promised to restore the riverfront to its natural state. However, there is no money budgeted for restoration, trail creation, or long-term maintenance of the riverfront area. As a local citizen, I strongly oppose the proposed sale of the Tice Road property and the rezoning of Riverwoods. The city of Akron should refrain from any new developments until after a master plan has been created. Thank you for your consideration. This is from Jeff Wilson, Ward 8. Rather than turn the Riverwood golf course into a cultural and natural dead end via townhomes, why not develop it in a way more in line with its natural setting? I would love the option to drink a coffee or have dinner in a much more scenic setting than currently found in the Merriman Valley. A connector bridge across the river would also be a great idea in terms of scenery and in terms of facilitating foot traffic to potential shops and cafes, especially in the summer. Green space matters and if integrated into development, it can enhance what Akron has to offer. Thank you for your time. This is from Sarah Blakely. I'm Sarah Blakely from Fairlawn and I'm urging you to preserve the Riverwood golf course for public recreation rather than approving another housing development. Using this space for eco-friendly rentals and campgrounds would bring in tourists to enjoy our beautiful trails while adding money to our local economy. Protect these green spaces for future generations. This is from Diane Pates. I'm writing to say that these green spaces are sacred, scarce, and so special. Preserve, honor, and save. 503 Sunrise Drive, Kent, Ohio. Kent, where we have a path along the river. This is from Barbara Hanna. Please, please, please preserve our valley. Valley. We need housing for nature. It is our obligation to take care of the earth. Thank you. This is from Ron Brubaker. Let's follow the example set by Frank Cyberling and, and Ralph Regula and preserve the Riverwood golf course for future future generations. This piece of land is far far more valuable as parkland open to all than another department complex for the benefit of tax revenue. Please do the right thing. Your action on this matter will have a long lasting impact on our entire region. This is from Thomas Fritch in Ward 10. It is a wonderful idea to preserve the Riverwood golf course property for recreation related use. Additional traffic congestion and impervious surfaces that a residential development would produce is not needed in the Merriman Valley. When the Cuyahoga floods this area, residents will look to the government for funds to restore and rebuild an expense that is not needed. This is from Anthony Petty. Stop the Riverwood Development Project. Expand the CVNP. Quit destroying naturally beautiful areas. Build somewhere else. Rip down old industrial and retail buildings and build on that land. Thank you. This is from Larry Menson. Folks, please keep the vision of the CVNP in your plans. I understand the development will be 196 units. That is not anything but people behind doors. Please have Petrus work with available grants and fundings to bring in an integrated mixed community that will be more sustainable than a bedroom community. Look at other options than single family large lots. Open up and use the riverfront to your advantage. Put a community within a communi community similar to what Liberty Development did in Lakewood with the for front porch driven townhomes with the first floor master suites at McKinley Place. As a resident for four years, I can tell you, everyone here enjoys this living space. If you provide mixed use and park access, people can get out and socialize post COVID and walk to entertainment, the outdoors and retail, not just drive to the highway. This is from Thomas Dunn. 
to whom it may concern, please consider preserving the old Riverwood property as a public green space to be enjoyed by all citizens. I was so disappointed when the 43 acre parcel on Tice Road was allowed to be developed. Please do not allow the same thing with the Riverwood property. This is too precious of a space to be developed into housing to be enjoyed by only a few people. That natural beauty of this spot should be able to be enjoyed by all. Please make the right long-term decision to pre preserve this land for public, tourist, and recreational use. Thank you. This is from Bruce Chapman. As a frequent out-of-towner, out-of-town Wooster user of the CVNP trail system, I would like to suggest that any undeveloped riverfront area remaining in the Cuyahoga corridor not be used for housing, industrial, or retail purposes, as these types of usage limit the beneficiaries of the space. Preserving the space as a recreational use nature area would allow all citizens to benefit and would tie in nicely with the CVNP to the north. This is a great opportunity to preserve green space for the future. This is from Mike Apple. Please preserve Riverwood as a place for everyone to use. Connecting this gem to the towpath would offer many mixed use opportunities to enhance the Cuyahoga National Park now and into the foreseeable future. Don't be short sighted and simply allow apartments and homes to be the only beneficiaries of this riverfront acreage. This is from Marsha Sampson. My name is Marsha Sampson. I live in Cuyahoga Falls and have lived here my entire life. My whole family loves the National Park. It's one of the best features we have in this area. It gives such peace and rejuvenation to walk the trails and see the beauty. To add to that with the Riverwood area would be so awesome. I love the idea of cabins where you could stay overnight. Currently, everybody I know either goes down to Mohican or some other places south of here to spend extended time. But we could have that here and it would make our community money. Please consider, please seriously consider this possibility. Be the visionaries as John Cyberling was. This is from Tom Burgett. The recent announcements regarding the Tyson Riverwood housing developments are di indeed disconcerting. As we all know, the natural areas of our great city are dwindling and residential development on a grand scale directly adjacent to a superb US national park is simply short-sighted. At this moment, the city of Akron has a unique opportunity to do the right thing within the confines of the Merriman Valley. Please consider your actions very carefully and properly manage the Riverwood acreage for all to enjoy. Rental housing won't do it. This is from Suzanne Goes Chapman. As a frequent out of town Wooster user of the CVNP trail system, I would like to suggest that any undeveloped riverfront area remaining in the Cuyahoga corridor not be used for housing, industrial, or retail purposes, as these types of uses usage limit the beneficiaries of the space. Preserving the space as a recreational use nature area would allow all citizens to benefit and would tie in nicely with the CVNP to the north. This is a great opportunity to preserve green space for the future. I grew up and was raised in those parks and my heart is in their preservation. This is from Ricardo Olivier. Please help support the Preserve the Valley Group proposal to turn Riverwood Golf Course as a gateway to the CVNP. This is from Susan Gallagher. Please consider a more beautiful vision of a mixed use area at Riverwood as the Southern gateway to the CVNP. A visitor center, lodging sites, kayak and bike rentals, coffee shops and restaurants would be an economic plus. Akron does not need more suburban sprawl. Build housing on old Route 59 downtown. We in highly populated Northeast Ohio need to preserve as much natural space as we can. I am sure John Cyberling would agree. This is from Craig Leonard. Please halt development in the Merriman Valley until a master plan can be worked on to ensure that the land is put to its best use. The outdoor recreation and park utilization of this land could be invaluable to local residents and businesses. It is this type of rushed cap capitalization to businesses over the common good that led my wife and I to move out of Akron last year. This is from Ron Ring. I am asking that you consider the proposal being presented to you by Preserve the Valley Citizens Action on December 14th for mixed use of recreation and tourism for the Old Riverwood Golf Course. Developing the Merriman Valley as the Southern Gateway to the Cuyahoga National Park makes sense for generations to come versus the planned housing development by Petrus Homes. Please give this proposal your full consideration for the people of Akron and the surrounding area. Thank you. This is from Kara Gilgenbach. Please halt development decisions and rezoning approval for the Riverwood Golf Course area until a public master planning process has been completed. This will give Akron and its neighboring communities opportunities to protect the natural, scenic, cultural, environmental, and an economic potential of the old Riverwood Golf Course property. These unique natural areas are vital to the people, wildlife, and businesses in the Akron region and attract visitors from around the world. 
This is from Lisa Gilgenbach. Please halt development in the Merriman Valley until a master plan can be worked on to ensure that the land is put to its best use. The outdoor recreation and park utilization of this land could be invaluable to local residents and businesses. It is this type of rush capitalization to businesses over the common good that led my wife and I to move out of Akron last year. This is from Sam Bonker. My name is Sam Bonker and although I live in Bath Township, I frequent the Merriman Valley and enjoy supporting local businesses in the area and the natural scenery. Continued suburban high density development is the antithesis antithesis of the Merriman Valley's defining character. As a resident of Bath Township, I know how important it is to cherish and preserve your community's natural character and prioritize the people of your municipality rather than the real estate businessmen and land developers before it is too late. I can tell you that I will be less likely to visit and patronize the Valley if this development occurs. Thank you for your time and consideration of your people. This is from Richard Feinberg. The Cuyahoga Valley National Park is one of the most appealing features of our region. We now have a rare opportunity to expand the protected area. Please don't move us in the opposite direction by developing the Merriman Valley for private housing. This is from Carla Miner. Please do not allow development of the Riverwood Golf Course. Let this be green recreation space for our community. This is from Nishika Lemon. As an African-American woman and mother, I have had to worry about my employment and school's restriction on my hair and my son. My first job in a corporate environment several years ago made me very nervous since I had just started my transition to wearing my hair in its natural form. I talked to my spouse and other minority coworkers at the company to get their opinions. I felt so angry, sad, and belittled that this was a very serious concern of mine. I had several sleepless nights. How could it be 2012 and I still had to be concerned about things that my white counterpart counterparts never gave a second thought. After much deliberation, I made the choice to wear my hair in its kinky form to work. I got a lot of questions and comments that black women get about our hair. Can I touch it? How does it stay like that? Oh my gosh, it's so puffy like a cotton ball. Why is it so big? Since this time, I have gotten these questions at new encounters with people who do not have a diverse friend group. It makes me feel like an animal or an alien on display for others to poke at. No one should feel bad because a certain sector of society has deemed their looks acceptable. America is a melting pot and everyone's hair should be accepted, whether it's straight, curly, kinky, braids, dreads, or you wear a um, hijab. I support Councilwoman Tara Sample's efforts to pass this ban because we live in a world where people are discriminated against because of their appearance. This is from Demoris Brown. It saddens me to observe protesters of any political party outside someone's home allowed to speak to residents of them home in a threatening manner and watch Akron Police Department do nothing, especially knowing a city council member resides. This is from Monique Mingo. I am writing to tell of my total disbelief of what I witnessed at Councilwoman Tara Mosley samples residents on December 5th, 2020. For a minute, I thought I was watching a modern day witch hunt. Instead, it was a crowd that said they come in peace and nothing was the furthest from the truth. Protesters came at night, some in body armor, some in full face cover and some with weapons and Trump flags. I asked, how was this peaceful? These peaceful protesters proceeded to call her elderly mom names and racial slurs again. How is this peaceful? I was so afraid for councilwoman samples mostly. Several People told her to call the authorities and to my surprise, her reply was they are here. Really, how is this okay? Then I find out elected officials cannot make a report or get any kind of help. This has to change. If the politicians are helping the community, tell me who is helping them. Do better, Akron, do better. This is from Fran Wilson. I wanted to chime in my support for the proposed ban on hair discrimination. Working closely with Kentucky State Representative Attica Scott in Louisville, I've heard her and her daughter's stories, not to mention the countless stories and public comment from the many U.S. cities that have passed similar protections. That was what made me look into Akron's own policy and reach out to council members Tara Samples and Rich Swirsky about whether we could take a more local approach to this policy. I want to praise these council members for their work on this and elevate the stories of my friends and neighbors who have submitted their approval and personal stories into public comment. We have a lot of work to do to make folks feel safe and empowered in Akron and filling the gaps found in, this, in the details is important work. I urge all those voting on this measure to vote yes. And if any council members are still questioning this policy, I want to remind them that they have had several months to do their homework. A similar policy was originally introduced earlier this year. Time to vote yes, period. This is from Patricia Brubaker. This land is invaluable as parkland. It would, it would improve the national park immensely. Please don't waste this valuable land on housing. Do the right thing and preserve this land for generations to come. 
This is from Derek Pryor. I am appalled, angered, and quite concerned that council member Tara, Sam Tara Mosley Samples family was targeted, verbally, racially accosted, and threatened while the Akron Police Department did nothing to protect council member Samples nor her family, who are not elected officials. The disgusting racial epithets hurled at council member Samples mother and children should not be tolerated. I do not begrudge anyone availing themselves of their First Amendment right to free speech, but threats of violence, either veiled or overt, are unacceptable and shameful. If the police department refuses to protect any ele elected officials, these thugs will continue to attempt to intimidate and eventually someone will get hurt. Something must be done to protect Akron's elected officials and their families. This is from Yvetta Brockman. Hello, I am a friend, resident of the community and hairstylist for Ms. Terror Samples and the incident that happened this weekend was very disturbing. Please, please help protect her family during these hard times that we're all facing with this racial war and pandemic. Have a blessed one. This is from Tina Ball. Good afternoon, I'm writing to express my concern for the lack of protection for our elected officials. During the past week, a group of protesters were going to multiple homes of local city council members. On Saturday, December 5th, the group gathered outside Councilwoman Tara Samples home and threatened to burn it down. The police allowed the protesters to continue to disrespect Ms. Samples and her family. I understand that part of the city council member's job is to have their residents public record. However, this was not a peaceful pro protest and had nothing to do with Councilwoman Samples' personal life. Fearful that things could escalate to another level, I called the police for her. I informed the dispatcher, Shrouder, of the situation in front of her home. The dispatcher asked me where she lived. I could not remember the exact address, but I told her exactly how to get there. The dispatcher responded she lives there with a disgusted tone in her voice. Then the dispatcher continued to see if there were any police officers called to that location. There were not. However, there were police officers in the video and they allowed the protesters to harass Ms. Samples. Recently in the state of Michigan, an elected official was kidnapped. How can we make sure our elected officials are protected from these groups of radicals? Please address this issue in all fairness, because truth be told, if a group of black people did the same thing to a white city council member, the outcome would not have been the same. The police would not have allowed them to be threatened in their own home. Sincerely a tax paying voting citizen of Akron, Ohio. This is from Kurt and Barb Neal. I urge you to reconsider the proposal to create a residential development on the old Riverwood golf course and instead transform it into a mixed use development dedicated to recreation and tourism. This would provide a one of a kind recreational and tourism venue connecting and complementing the CVNP, providing unparalleled opportunities for our children and children's children to experience the natural beauty of the Cuyahoga Valley. As the CVB, CVNP stands as a testament to a past generation, the transformed Riverwood Golf Course will stand as a testament to our vision and values long after we are gone. This is from um, Lisa Rapaski. Please, please, please provide security detail for elected officials. Last night, I watched a video of the demonstrators outside of Tara Samples' home. I was terrified for her life and her family's life. It felt as if the Klan showed up to hurt my friend. The, those protesters were not peaceful. They were threatening. Their actions need to be seen as domestic terrorism. If the level of security that needs to be provided is greater than what the Akron Police Force can provide or should provide, please reach out to the FBI. No one, including elected officials, should be subject to this harassment and intimidation. Please take bold, swift action to protect all of Akron's residents. This is from Stephen Muhammad. Hoping all is well. My name is Stephen Muhammad and I reside at 305 Alden Avenue in Akron. I have served this community for more than 30 years and have seen a few things, but none as disturbing as what I witnessed Saturday night at 1297th Street on Akron's east side. Councilperson Tara Mosley and family were harassed and intimidated by a group of what appeared to be Trump supporters. They used racial slurs and brandished firearms in front of the aforementioned residents. This is crossing the line in my opinion. Why? To disagree is one thing, but to bring weapons at night, remember this is Saturday, folks had the daytime as an option, and using racial slurs while the police remained disengaged. They appeared to be 25 to 30 yards away. All of this taking place while this country is still highly vulnerable to violence and bloodshed. Too often the victims in these scenarios are black people. I am hoping that the city council will address this formally and do the right thing here. City officials are still citizens and have the right to be acknowledged and protected. This is from Kendall Sut Sutton. I am writing to express the severe di disgust I am feeling over the events that transpired over the weekend at the home of Councilwoman Tara, Tara Samples and her elderly mother. These armed white people showed up with the sole intent of causing a disruption and were allowed to disturb the peace in a neighbor and terrorize people for simply being an elected official. 
Had the tables been turned and an angry mob of black people had shown up at a white official's home, I think it's safe to say the APD would have responded much differently. Events such as this on 7th Street should never be allowed to occur in our country. There is a difference between peaceful assembly and showing up after dark to cause fear in people. These obviously unwell white men have been threatening and terrorizing Ms. Samples and her family online for weeks and have now shown up in person and no steps are being made to protect the family. When will you step up? How many more black bodies need to be placed in bags before you care? I know Ms. Samples on both a professional and personal level, and she is a gift to your city. You need more elected officials that aren't afraid to stand up for what is right. Something must change and swiftly. This is from Pastor Gregory Harrison. I would like to express my concerns about statements made by Councilman Phil Lombardo over the last week during three public meetings. Councilman Lombardo used the analogy of too many chefs in the kitchen when discussing allowing citizens to see where the money is being spent. He also questioned why citizens would even request information stating, why do they need that type of information? And finally, he intimated that providing citizens with certain public information would only create more questions. His comments and position on the city releasing public information is disturbing. Councilman Lombardo's statement that he would like to get off of Zoom away from the eyes of the public and go into a room to discuss issues with only the city council and police present is most troubling. I do agree that there are some police records and practices that should not be made public. The records and practices that fall into this category are specifically outlined in state and federal laws. Councilman Lombardo's assertion that we should let elective officials and criminal justice officials do their job without public scrutiny or questioning is a dangerous mindset, likened to the way oppressors operate without the voice of the people with whom they oppress. Councilman Lombardo often mentions his profession as an auditor, stating that he is a numbers man. Has he ignored the numbers, number of people and organizations calling for change? Did he ignore the percentage of voters who declared by their vote that they would like to see a change in policies to afford more transparency? Councilman Lombardo is a professional auditor who does not believe that independent audits are necessary. This makes no sense. Backroom deals away from the stakeholders and shareholders scrutiny may be how Councilman Lombardo conducts business on his job at First Energy, but as a public official that's considered corruption by way of a conspiracy to withhold something from us that is rightfully ours. In addition to sharing my concerns with Councilman Lombardo, I would want to take this opportunity to thank the three members of council who challenged some of the above statements and offered assurance that transparency is a priority of Akron City Council. This is from William Fleischer. This action must not stand uncensored, allowing even encouraging armed persons, unarmed almost as bad, to verbally assault and attempt to demean anyone is unthinkable. The only police involvement should have been to take these persons to jail. This is from Kathy Brown. While we all should have the right to freedom of speech, armed protests at council members' home is intended as intimidation, not speech. Council should call for action against armed protests. This is from April Parms Jones. I feel it is very important for the city of Akron to continue to support the mask ordinance for the public safety. As COVID-19 numbers rise, it is imperative that the city of Akron protects its citizens. This is from Donna Plunkett. The recent group intimidation of an elected official on 7th Street in Akron by armed protesters must be addressed. No one should be harassed and threatened in this manner, particularly in front of their own home. This is not free speech and action in a democratic republic. This is law lawlessness. It must be acknowledged for what it is and stopped. This is from Jack Woodyard. This is not freedom of speech when a group of hoodlums seeks to intimidate an elected official and her family. Please stand up for the vast majority of us who are law abiding and respectful of the rights of others. This is from Shauna Thompson. I write this today with a heavy heart. In light of the events that took place at the home of the mother of Councilwoman Samples, there is clear indication that she is not properly protected. This was racial intimidation and harassment under the guise of peaceful protest. Under no circumstances should a bunch of armed men descend on the home of an elected official while throwing racial slurs, dressing in monkey suits, calling an elderly black woman an expletive repeatedly or threaten to burn her home down. If the point of the protest was to rebut the mask mandate, why were they masked the entire time? Ms. Samples is doing her job to the best of her ability with the best intentions for the greater public. This incident will not be met lightly if it happens again. You will have a bigger mess on your hands. If you do not protect her, we will, we will by any and every means necessary. Happy holidays. This is a letter from the Alpha, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. 
We are proud citizens living within your district and need your help to change the laws in our state by supporting the work of the Crown Coalition to help end discrimination against people because of their hair. Dove, along with the Natural, National Urban League, Color of Change, and Western Center on Law and Poverty has founded the Crown Coalition, creating a respectful and open world for natural hair, which supports the Crown Act in California, SB 188, New York, and New Jersey. The Crown Act has now been signed into law by the three states above, Virginia, Colorado, and the city of Cincinnati, Ohio, making hair discrimination illegal. These bills will ensure that traits historically asso associated with race, such as hair texture and hairstyle, are protected from discrimination in the workplace and in K-12 public and charter schools. These bills are only the beginning, as the Crown Coalition is galvanizing support for legislation to end hair discrimination nationwide. 25 additional states are considering the Crown Act and have either pre-filled, pre-filed, filed, or formally stated an intent to introduce their own anti-hair discrimination bills. We need to do this in our state as well. The time is now. Please fill the please visit thecrownact.com to learn more. We look forward to hearing your position on this proposal. This is from Baja Zabrowski. The recent failure of Akron police to at minimum monitor the protesters at Tara Samples home is just another example of the racism that is ingrained in policing is dangerous and insidious. Why are these protesters allowed privilege that any person of color would likely experience being brutalized or shot? Your racism, racism is on display. The danger of this kind of display with the lawbreakers disobeying mask mandates in a pandemic is another issue that is concerning. It's easy to kill today without any weapon, but ignorance and viral load. Stand up and make a strong statement that racism in the lack of police force of enforcement is unacceptable. Also stand up to proclaim that mask mandates will be enforced and back up that with rightful arrests. This is from Dominic Catalano. This past Saturday, December 5th, a group of armed protesters, some wearing body armor, showed up after dark with bullhorns and escorted by the police to the home of Akron City Councilwoman Tara Samples. Councilwoman Samples was there with her mother, adult children, and some grandchildren. There is a live video on Facebook showing one person even wearing a monkey suit. This is not only appalling, it is intimidation and threatening the safety of all at her home. This is absolutely deplorable and unacceptable behavior on behalf of the protesters. And as a personal friend and confidant of Ms. Mosley Samples, I am appalled. We at Our Revolution Akron and Akron DSA demand more protection from alt-right armed protesters for our elected officials like Councilwoman Tara. This is from Shelton Smith. It's with great sadness and a heavy heart that I write this. The guy they call president has made it comfortable for these racist nuts to come out of hiding. How can you sit by and do nothing about an elected official being subjected to this type of harassment and abuse? I wonder what would happen if they did this in front of Sherry Bevan Walsh's house. We already understand the worth of an African American's life in America, which is nothing unless caught on tape. And even then the price is minuscule. I'm a firm believer in the right to bear arms, but I'm not a bully nor a coward. This is absolutely unacceptable and understand we are not our ancestors. You push, we push, it's only right. I just hope someone has the guts and courage to do the right thing. I'll always pray for a better way, but I'll always do what's best for me and mine. This is from Greg Clipper. Good afternoon, my name is Greg Clipper. I am proud to say that I was born and raised in Akron. I'm a college graduate and unfortunately I moved out of the city to pursue my dreams. I was appalled by some protesters that arrived at her family's residence with police escort and harassed her family. I'm struggling to understand how a group of protesters can pull a city resource in a high crime area without a permit. I'm hearing they were militarized Kevlar vests and weapons some racial slurs from the protesters. If the police won't protect its council members, who will? This is also a concern. I look for reasons to relocate back home. When I see things that just occurred the other day, I quickly second guess myself. As an Akronite, I am proud of who made me the person I am. This behavior from these protesters is not who I am and it is not Akron. This is from Deborah Marine. What happened at Councilwoman Sample's home this weekend was a disgrace. The vile epithets hurled at her and the idiot in the monkey suit made it all too clear this was a group of racist terrorists trying to intimidate an individual member of the city council based on her race and her gender. The police stood off to the side and simply watched, doing nothing to protect Councilwoman Sample or her family. This is from Jamie, the Honorable Jamie Dixon. I am the Honorable Jamie Dixon. I write this letter in concern of the protection of some members of your legislative body. This weekend, there were a group of people assembled outside Councilwoman Sample's home, exercising their First Amendment rights, the right to freedom of speak, 
to express themselves without having to worry about government interference and the right to peacefully assemble or gather to protest government. However, it does not give anyone the right to threaten another person's life, especially that of a government official. I write this requesting that there be measures put into place to assure the protection of your government officials when things of this nature rise. The threats that have been made on one's life and to their family is a felony offense and should be treated as such. These actions are ones that cannot be taken lightly. Violence and threats are unacceptable. Yes, I know there will be anger amongst a few, but we must use that anger to vote, volunteer, and do things the right way because violence is never the answer. Mayor, I ask that you request that the police take reports and that those reports be given to the city's law director and that the law director launch a fact-finding investigation and once, once concluded for that information to be turned over to the local authorities or FBI so that charges may be filed. Thank you for your time. This is from Lauren Somerville. I've been so upset over the incident that occurred over the weekend at Tara Mosley's and her mom's residence. I realize that everyone has the right to protest. However, these people came armed with guns and body armor. I can attest to this because I was there. It took me back to the 60s when white people simply beat and kill black folks because of the color of their skin. I know this still goes on, but to actually be a witness to this hate in Akron, Ohio saddens me. If these so-called protesters came to protest mask wearing, while did they have on masks? The first word spoken by them was to the elder of the home, Tara's mom. She was called an expletive. I'm sure Tara's mom had memories of the racism that occurred in her life, especially being married to a white man. Tara cannot control what is said by her mom or anyone else. I believe these people came for something else. They shouted all kinds of demeaning words, waved Trump flags and came to the house when it was dark outside. Protesters have rights, but coming at night to someone's house saying Tara wants to create a race war has nothing to do with a mask. Just wondering if black folks would go and protest in Ellet, Fairlawn, Firestone Park, and other areas in the dark. What would happen? I'm sure the police would have check license plates and IDs to verify if anyone had, war had warrants. I'm sure the citizens in these areas would have had guns and we would have been asked to leave the area. I believe you all truly know this to be true. The police did not come to Tara's aid until her friends and family showed up. Please protect our public officials. This is from Janice Brock. Good afternoon, I would like to express my full support for a citywide ban on hair discrimination. There is an undue added stress to black and brown individuals as we enter into the professional sector. Instead of the normal stress of preparing your thoughts and for presenting your qualifications in an interview, so many times I have found myself more worried about if I should straighten my hair so that I am not seen as unprofessional. This is unacceptable. As a young black woman and with the love I have for my city and the community that gives me strength, I urge the city of Akron to ban hair discrimination. Um, there's not a name on this one. The city has to do better because situations like these can fuel bad results. This could have turned racial and someone from either side could have got hurt or killed, although police was present calling backup if is not the best way to handle it. Although I understand the right to protest this 2020 where people don't think about right or wrong, but self felt justice. No excuse about no harm as a black man. I have police make people move on when five or more blacks may be socially gathering. Let's not let politics turn good to bad. This is from Rudolph Jackson. I saw the eradicate behavior displayed by the so-called peaceful protesters spreading their unwanted propaganda at the home of her mother Saturday night. The Gestapo police escorted these racist people who to toted guns and wore bulletproof vests to their house. They stood by and let them call her mother everything but a child of God. How is this the land of the free and you're terrified to be in your home? Make no mistake about it. She has the support and strength of the community and no disrespect will be tolerated ever again. By the way, did those cops check for CCWs and who gave them the permit to come to her home? Because maybe, maybe we sh should start protesting to some homes, maybe we'll get some attention. This is from Latanya Lewis Becton. I am concerned and disgusted by the recent protests at our council members' homes. While it is these protesters' right to gather, showing up with guns and bulletproof vests was not a good start to a peaceful protest. Even more sickening was the waste of police man hours by meeting them or escorting them specifically to Tara Sample's home. It is my hope that officials come up with a way to protect these officials. Tara Samples works hard in our community and we fully back her. With or without police presence, these gatherings will eventually lead to unnecessary violence that we already have enough of in our city. I am unsure who authorized the escort or how many times these escorts will be permitted, but I do know it elected officials and their families need to feel safe in their own homes. 
This is from Cheryl Urban. The protest at Akron Councilwoman Tara Sample's home this past Saturday was disgraceful. Not only was it intimidation, but a real threat to the safety of her family. Those people par participating should face some kind of justice. This is from Peter Atsave. If the Akron police refuse to protect public officials as they did with Councilwoman Samples on December 5th, perhaps we need to defund them. Cut their health care, cut their pensions, cut their pay, cut their staff. What use are they? We don't near, need nearly 35% of the city budget going to useless cops. Why are we socializing the cost of a group of academic underachievers that took a week, a few weeks of government paid training that refused to do their job and act as passive witness to political intimidation, harassment, and bullying? We need real investments in Akron, healthcare, housing, and education, not overweight, overpaid, mindless cheerleaders for foaming at the mouth, Trump supporting COVID spreading mobs. This is from Christopher Henderson. I'm writing in regards to the above noted matter. I'm from Akron, born, raised, and educated. And what I witnessed from Councilwoman Tara Mosley Sample's Facebook live feed was one of the most horrid things I seen in Akron in a very long time. During her live feed, I seen people outside of her residence disturbing the peace by hurling racial comments, spewing despicable allegations, and causing fear among the community. I was appalled by this action and knowing that Akron police officers were at the scene and did not de-escalate the situation until people in the community showed up to confirm that Councilwoman Sample's welfare was satisfactory gave me more reason to write this letter. It was clear that those thugs were there to do to incite harm and manipulate her to withdraw her stance on the mandate that all citizens should abide. We must do better for the people that hold these positions. An elected official should feel safe, not only in their community, but especially in their homes. I'm all for people exercising their constitutional right to peaceful protest, but when it intensifies to racial tirades and potential violence, something should be done. We need to safeguard our elected officials to ensure their well-being and allow them to implement policies that have been correctly discussed and voted upon. I'm in favor of visiting a policy law where our officials are protected from people who want to take the law into their own hands and do things that will cause harm to our elected officials and the people in the community. Because if you won't, then the people will. Thank you. This is from Joyce Dillon. Although I was deeply bothered by the entire event that took place on Saturday, December 5th, 2020 at the home of Councilwoman Tara Samples, I would like to focus on three parts in particular. One, while I understand people have the right to protest, standing outside the residence of a public official should not be allowed. Standing outside her residence, calling her and her mother disgraceful names, children were present besides making other nasty and hurtful comments that have nothing to do with the reason for the supposed protest should not be permitted. The protesters arrived escorted by the police. Was this lawful? If yes, why? They arrived in bulletproof vest carrying guns and waving large flags indicating they support Donald Trump. What did this have to do with the supposedly wearing a mask mandate they claim they did not agree with? The fact that some of them were wearing masks seems hypocritical to me. Why did the Akron police stand back and do nothing during all the names, callings, and beatings by the protesters. However, when support for Councilwoman Samples began to arrive, then they moved closer and began voicing their order to her supporters who happened to be black. Someone suggested her home should be burned down, needs to be taken seriously and investigated and the person's charged. Because I do not know who will have access to this letter, I will not include my address. However, should someone want to contact me, my number is listed, including my name. Thank you for your time. This is a letter from the Ohio Young Black Democrats. We, the Ohio Young Black Democrats Executive Committee, are writing to you today advocating for and in support of amending and or supplementing Title III, Chapter 38, Unlawful Discrimination, Section 38.01, Definitions of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Akron, and declaring an emergency, which would effectively ban hair discrimination across the City of Akron. Akron is a diverse city whose population consists of 308 percent African Americans. According to a recent article written by the American Bar Association, 80% of Akron African American women felt they needed to change their hair in order to fit in at their workplace, and students across the nation are facing disciplinary action for wearing hair that is native to the Black culture. We urge the members of Akron City Council to amend the Code of Ordinances to ban hair discrimination across the city of Akron. Thank you for your consideration. This is from Brittany Miller. 
This email is in regards to the radical protesters who thought it was okay to protest in front of Councilwoman Tara Sample's mother's house regarding a mask mandate. I find it very disturbing that the Akron police escorted the protesters to her home on 7th Avenue, but neglected to protect and serve a city official when she was being harassed and threatened. I do understand protesters have the right to protest, but toting guns and wearing monkey suits to protest a mask mandate while wearing a mask seems very extreme. I believe Tara Samples and her family may be in danger and should be protected so she can continue to serve her community. If this protest would have happened in a more rural suburban community, I am almost 100% positive the outcome would have been very different, resulting in an arrest or worse, another murder. Thank you. This is from Wesley the Keeper from A Akron Honey. To say that we, people of color, specifically black people, need anti-hair discrimination laws is an understatement. It's sad that we even have to say it, but from the personal experiences without such measures, we are exposed to being suppressed in white spaces. In my experience, it was in the workplace. The kicker is that these spaces are meant for all Americans to thrive, and without such protections, we are systematically submitted to a disadvantage that mirrors the history of arguably the ugliest part of our nation. We have to start undoing that together. I not only support anti-hair discrimination, but demand that. This is from Brant Lee, the chair of the Akron Civil Rights Commission. On behalf of the Akron Civil Rights Commission, I would like to communicate to you directly that at its meeting on December 1st, 2020, the commission voted unanimously to endorse the proposed legislation proposed by council members Samples and Sforsky, amending the city's anti-discrimination ordinance to include reference to hair texture or hairstyles historically associated with a particular racial group. Employers who are accustomed to straight hair that is relatively easily managed may be unaware that their expectations with regard to hairstyles have a racially unequal impact. Others may be well aware, regardless of their level of awareness, that unequal impact is what anti-discrimination is meant to prevent. This proposed ordinance clarifies the situation, which will make it easier for the commission to do its work. Thank you for the opportunity to share our views. Please don't hesitate to contact the commission if you have any questions regarding this or any related matter in the future. This is from Pamela Novak. As a physician and a citizen, I am appalled that people unhappy with appropriate health safety measures and armed with guns and wearing bulletproof vests protested outside Councilwoman Sample's home. However, I am far more concerned that when the protesters requested police presence, the police did not immediately go to the home to protect the Sample's family. We must not allow anyone to intimidate, threaten, or hurt our elected officials. This is from Crystal Barner. This letter is in regards to the recent protests that took place outside of Councilwoman Tara Sample's home this past weekend. First of all, I would like to state that I am completely disgusted at what I witnessed, not only by the protesters, but also by the Akron Police Department and their lack of involvement. The protesters arrived with one mission in mind, and that was to excite violence. They said that they came in peace, but yet they arrived with bulletproof vests, waving Trump signs in a predominantly black neighborhood and throwing a racial slurs and profanity. Not only that, they arrived with a police escort. Not once did the police try to calm them down and the situation may have gotten worse if Councilwoman Samples had not called for her community and family to step in and protect her. If the Akron Police Department job was to protect and serve, they did one lousy job at protecting Councilwoman Samples that night. They willingly chose not to get involved no matter how the quick, how the quickly the peaceful protest escalated by the protesters until Councilwoman Samples family arrived. Before it was completely okay for the protesters, protesters to throw racial slurs and vulgar, vulgar words toward not only Mrs. Samples, but to your senior mother. This entire situation was uncalled for, unfair, and does not show that APD has the best interest of our community or our respective leaders, but yet has sided with the white supremacists that only came to evoke fear and anger in a community that has already seen too much of both. The community is demanding an answer. I also have some voicemails. I'm an Akron resident in Ward 3. Uh, I'm calling in regards to the uh, mask mandate and the gathering order. I want to know uh, what gives you guys the right to tell us how many people we can and can't have in our homes and we have to wear masks in our homes when guests are here. Um, that violates our constitutional rights. So my question is, when are you just going to lift this mandate uh, that you passed illegally anyway, uh, considering you're in violation of the OAM law? Um, so just wanted to know that. Thank you very much. Yes, my 
name is John Hurst. I hope to play this at the next city council event. Please remember. Even though I am not a citizen of Anna Creek, I have a position of nearby Springfield Township, and the important uh, actions that Sarah samples, the way she talks to people, treats people, threatens people, her son does, are a disgrace to the city council and the city of Akron. I am Bill Nesbitt at uh, 330-379-2235, and the address 1155 Diagonal Road here in Akron. Um, even though it may seem unrealistic to do the following, uh, in regards to the Akron Bureau of Public Utilities moving to its high street location and also know that they've already moved to the newer one on South Main. I want to once again state that that's unfair and we really definitely should not be moving that newer location of utilities coming in high street location. Of course, due to the coronavirus situation and with a, as said by our governor and our medical officials, we have a dire situation becoming increasingly dire, then we definitely would not be of proper care to our citizens to have extended travel done to do essential uh, functions. We need to have the high street there, particularly for our population without uh, traveling cars, that one hour bus ride round trip, going and making the payment the same day of an urgent payment or emergency payment, being able to do that as opposed to moving it from a spot and mentally being a part of additional buses and travel, uh, from one hour to at least two or more hours of night travel. The travel, cold exposure, the stress, and also as opposed to um, um, the requirements of mailing with postage and the time involved, not having the ability to have the drop off and the same day delivery for that urgent situation. Those without mailing cars, without bank accounts, that's a availability that's a urgent, possibly essential to a kind of well being. To take that away, you're, we are adding to the problems and our weight of our doings at this urgent, dire time. I ask council people to insist that we have this handled on the way that's reasonable, despite the realities of how it's already personal that has moved. Uh, I trust that will be done. And uh, I also support for all those who had to handle the um, protest situations here. Uh, prayers for you all. We hope there'll be understanding and all. Again, let us act for the welfare of all of our Akron people. Thank you for your aid. All happy years of Christmas, New Year's. My name is Zach Pierce. I was just calling to uh, just kind of share my experience. The uh, day after Thanksgiving, I had tried to call a member of City Council, Tara Sample. I had seen several posts on Facebook saying that she was threatening her constituents. I did not really believe that coming from a city councilwoman that she would do such a thing. Um, I decided to call Tara Sample myself and kind of ask her if this, this is what was going on. I asked her, you know, uh, are you threatening your constituents on Facebook? She told me it is none of my business and hung up the phone on me. I thought that was kind of rude, but I was just going to let it go. Several hours later, I received a call from a private number. The caller sounded almost exactly like Tara Sample. The caller told me to watch my back. At the time, I was in the car with my eight-year-old daughter. I don't think this is appropriate behavior from a city council woman. Um, I just kind of let it go after this. I was going to call and make a police report, but I didn't. Um, now, yesterday morning, or this morning at 7 a.m., my mom is now receiving calls asking for me. Um, I'm not sure if this is the same caller calling my mom now or what's going on. I'm not part of these protests. I just saw a Facebook post, and I was just calling to ask a question. 
and the response I got from a city council member was threats. Our city, our county, our state, and our country, this has been one of the most trying years in our history. We need leaders. I ask that Tara Sample be a leader at this time. Thank you. Yes, my name is Michael Miller, and I'm calling in regards to the video I saw on Facebook from Councilwoman Samples. And if that is in any way acceptable of a government official at any level, I am deeply saddened by the government. And from counsel immediately. It, it, you know, how, how does it get totally turned into how many black officers are there? That should make no difference. An officer is an officer. She doesn't back every officer in Akron. Why is she even part of that? Hello, my name is uh, James Island. I'm uh, calling uh, to basically uh, make my comment about uh, Mrs. Tara Samples. I uh, saw some very, uh, very unsavory behavior by her towards protesters, and uh, you know there were vulgarities and. Uh, Calling uh, white people names, uh, racial attacks on white people uh, who are legally protesting outside of the residence, and uh, I, I don't, really don't feel she's fit to be a council member. I don't feel that she should be uh, representing anyone uh, on behalf of Akron, Ohio, or any other state in Ohio, uh, city in Ohio. I'm sorry, uh, she's not fit to uh, be council member. Not only for that reason, but also for the uh, various infractions and illegal things that she's been doing, which I really hope that will be investigated by the city uh, of Akron and the state of Ohio very soon. Uh, I'm at uh, 640 North Main Street in Akron. Uh, hopefully, Mrs. Samples won't be sending any BLM terrorists to my address like she had threatened to do to the legal protesters uh, that she has harassed uh, for legally protesting outside of uh, various residences that were public and announced uh, online. Uh, I really think that people should take a, a look into this, whether they are in support of or against uh, Mrs. Samples, and uh, really consider and uh, reflect whether this woman should represent Akron, Ohio, and the city council. Uh, that's all for now. Thank you, and have a good night. Hello, my name is Sarah, and I would like to express my disappointment with Councilwoman Tara Samples. As a resident of Ward 5 who disagrees with the recent ordinance that Tara voted for, limiting the number of people allowed in my home and mandating that I wear a mask, it is disappointing that Tara seems to lack the professionalism to accept criticism from her constituents. Instead of, quote, clapping back, unquote, I believe Ms. Samples should reach out to those who disagree with her and have a conversation. Perhaps this would help us all find common ground or maybe just to see life from a di different perspective. But judging from recent social media posts calling Akron residents who disagree with her mofos and Trumpers, it is clear Ms. Samples disdains those who disagree with her or challenge her authority. I am not sure if Ms. Samples realized that she works for and represents all of the residents of Ward 5, not only those who agree with her. Council people are not monarchs, and the citizens of Akron are not the peasantry. We are allowed to disagree with you and let you know about it. Council people should have enough professionalism to accept that and reach out to constituents to find common ground. The residents of Ward 5 does deserve an apology from Ms. Samples. And the reason I didn't leave my last name or my address is because I don't trust this council, um, this city council, to respect my privacy and not um, seek retaliation. That's how bad things have gotten at this point. Um, it's very disappointing and I encourage all council people to, to reach out to those who disagree with them. Have conversations. It doesn't need to um, descend into calling people names and hating people who disagree with you. We all should be better than that. Thank you. Uh, 
10 stars in the middle of a message leaving, leaving a message earlier when my phone died. Michael Miller, Forbes Avenue. I was commenting on Councilwoman Sample and her horrific display on Facebook Live, including violation of the ordinance she pushed herself. She made the comment within the video that they weren't in the house, nowhere in the ordinance. Does it say they have to be inside? They were all on the property. Most were unmasked. There were definitely more than six outsiders. I would love to see a citation put in her hand. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. She obviously does not care about the Constitution because for some reason the Trump flag gives the right to take away peaceful assembly. It is a travesty of any government agency anywhere the way she acted on her own video. And to encourage it to be shared over and over again, condemning the police department that she is supposed to be shaping for not violating the Constitution, uh, having a, a complete comment about the people that some of those people had guns. Guess what? Second Amendment. There's another one. Let's step on the ball. Does anyone she don't like? Because she owns 7th Avenue, according to her video. Please, if you care about Akron, get that woman off council. That's the last of the public comments we received. Thank you so much, Sarah, uh, for reading all of those comments. Um, and again, we wanna thank all of those who participated um, and sent public comments for this evening. We will now go to our committee assignments, rules, Councilman Freeman. 245. Public safety, Councilman Kamer. 215. Public and uh, budget and finance, Councilman Freeman. 3 p.m. Parks and Rec, Councilman Neal. Uh, 145. Planning and Economic Development, Councilman Fusco. One o'clock. Housing and Neighborhood Assistance, Councilman Fusco. Subject to call. Public Service, Councilwoman Samples. 2 p.m. Health and Social Services, Councilwoman Amobian. 2.30. Public Utilities and Green Committee, Councilman Freeman. 245. Thank you so much. Is there anything else coming before council? I do see Councilwoman Sample's hand. Thank you, Madam President. Um, first, first and foremost, I, I, I want to say um, I'm very troubled that uh, anyone would try to form a narrative that I am anti-police. Um, Many of those officers I've worked with in the courthouse um, for many years. I know many of them. Many of them I'm very good friends with. Um, so that needs to be stated. Um, never once did I say uh, anything derogatory about these officers. So I know there's a couple of people wanting to form their own opinions about what I said and what I didn't say. Um, some of those people who called in are people who were actually at my house with guns. So there you go. That, I mean, they were at my house with guns. That's not peaceful. You came at night and then you threatened to go to one of my other colleagues' houses after you left mine with the same tone in the same manner. Um, I've never been anti-police. I, I, I've actually helped with their recruiting and I, I'm very concerned that they're trying to shape that narrative here or even on their um, some of those officers know my daughters. Um, the sergeant was, was very nice to my mother. He came on the porch and tried to calm my mother down. Um, and again, uh, he did go to those protesters when he saw things were getting a little heated and told them he thought it was wise for them to leave. Um, how they got there and who they came with is it, still unknown to me. Um, all I know is I came down the street and there was two cops sitting in the alleyway by my house and a whole bunch of people in front of my house. 
um, and called my mom names before I got back there. She came on the porch, told him to move from in front of the house and he said very explicit things to my mom when she was in the house with two of my grandchildren. So um, I'm very professional. I don't call people. I don't threaten people. It's just ridiculous that, you know, but it, neither here nor there, anyone who knows me knows I don't do that. And I can't stop other people from saying what they want to say um, and doing what they want to do um, in the heat of the moment. Again, they came to my house. I didn't go to theirs. I didn't call them. I didn't bring a gun. I didn't bring a flag. I, I didn't wear a bulletproof vest. I didn't go to anybody's house at night. So um, I, I, that needs to be said because I do have officer friends who've caught me concerned uh, about a narrative that's being shaped. And, and, and it's unfortunate. Um, people can say what they want, the video is there, make your own determination. And again, for my own safety and the safety of my family, I absolutely recorded it. So then no one can say well, this didn't happen. What if they had put out a gun and shot my mom or shot me? And no one would have ever showed up. It was just me and my mom and my two granddaughters there. And, and I'm asking this, this, this city council and our administration that we really need to take a look at uh, how people get to organize without a permit. And if they want to have officers present with them, they should have to pay for off duty officers. We can't say in the sense that our officers are strapped. They got other things that they have to take care of. They shouldn't enforce uh, face masks at people's houses. They need to solve other crimes, but yet you have officers who would rather have been somewhere else having to sit there and deal with this foolishness. And that's exactly what it was, foolishness. It was never about a mask. It was about a mask. You wouldn't have never come in Trump gear with Trump flags and wearing a monkey suit. And we black people know what that means when you wear a monkey suit. You can't have it both ways. Are you mad at us about a, ma a mask mandate or is this something else? Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilwoman Samples. Councilman Malik. Thank you very much, Madam President. And uh, obviously very, very saddened by what uh, happened at Councilwoman Samples home. And, you know, I, I understand that folks have a uh, right to protest, but, you know, her, her family didn't ask for that and her neighbors didn't ask for that. And it, it really does, I think, speak to everything we heard the last hour speaks to, I think, where we are as a country. And I think we're all going to reflect on that. Um, I, one thing I wanted to talk about was um, the, the city of Cleveland recently announced that it would resume utility disconnections. And this prompted me to take a harder look at this issue here in Akron. As previously reported by the Beacon Journal, the city uh, of Akron resumed water shutoffs for non-payment in August. There were 366 disconnections in August and 810 in September. According to the Finance Department, there were 717 disconnections in October and 418 in November for a total of 2,311 disconnections since the summer. I don't know whether this matches up to 2,300 separate households, but it almost certainly represents thousands of people who've had their water turned off during this pandemic while we're urging folks to stay home and wash their hands. I know there's some concern that an indefinite moratorium on shutoffs could lead to a broader series of delinquencies and shutoffs after the expiration of a moratorium. Uh, given that delinquent bills will likely mount throughout a moratorium and that COVID-19 resources will likely be much more limited next year. Uh, but while those financial concerns are understandable, respectfully, 2,300 shutoffs is a crisis right now hitting our most vulnerable residents. Since the summer, city administration has tried to connect utility customers with resources. The Akron CARES program initially had at least $700,000 to assist with water and sewer bills. The city has done a lot of work to make sure the application process is as easy as possible and to do outreach to folks who are behind. But this fund had about $369,000 on October 5th, and it's currently around $314,000. We're clearly not able to get this money to the folks who need it, despite our best efforts. So I believe there needs to be some form of blanket forgiveness to keep folks with delinquent accounts through a uh, float through the next uh, few months 
If this creates a budgetary problem in 2021, we can look for more private donor funds. We can look elsewhere in the budget. Today, council was asked to approve $12.4 million in new debt for city projects. We can find the money to solve the shutoff crisis, but we do need a moratorium on water shutoffs until COVID-19 is over. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilman Malik. Councilman Fusco? Yes, thank you, President Somerville. Um, first of all, we here on council, um, <clears throat> like all of our neighbors, all of our friends, all of our family, have had an incredibly strenuous year um, on so many levels. Um, we've lost family, we've lost friends. We're currently praying and pulling for our friend and colleague, Rich Swarsky. I'm asking for all of us, both in public service, elected, and all Akron residents, we must be more sympathetic, more empathetic toward one another. The decisions that the mayor, that the council, business owners, families, and individuals on their own, the decisions they're making are some of the hardest that they've ever had to make. Again, I'm pleased emphatically asking all in Akron, please be more sympathetic and empathetic, empathetic toward one another, toward our neighbors, toward, toward our family, toward our friends, toward one another. We need this more now than ever. I also want to request, well, state that we should all congratulate our very own Sarah Biviano. Uh, she's now a certified municipal clerk. She went through uh, uh, quite, a few, quite a few hoops uh, to become that. And so we, uh, and I know all of us, our council is gonna be better off because of uh, all the uh, hard work that Sarah Biviano had to go through to get this accomplished. So Sarah, congratulations. Thank you and um, keep up the good work. Thanks. Thank you so much, Councilman Fusco. And again, congratulations to uh, the best assistant clerk around, Sarah. So thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank Councilman so Freeman. Much. Uh, yes, we've had a lot of discussion this evening, and uh, I just, uh, I don't know if I'm the last one to speak or not, but I just wanted to remind everyone that we're able to have these discussions, uh, disagreements, big problems that need to be ironed out. Uh, we're able to do that in America because uh, 70, I think 79 years ago on December 7th, uh, at Pearl Harbor, people died. And uh, uh, posterity today, we have a lot of folks to thank out of 16 million World War II veterans. We have approximately 300,000 left. And I would, just, I would just encourage each and every one of you, uh, maybe in the midst of our, uh, of our, of our problems and issues, uh, seek out a veteran and say thank you. And just wanted to remind each and every one of us that uh, December 7th, that was, a, was the turning point for our country. And... Uh, because of ultimate victory, uh, we're able to have these discussions today and we're able to uh, still have a flag that we can salute and we can honor. Uh, we disagree, but our constitution stands and it stands because uh, thousands of individuals gave their lives. So we want to recognize and honor this day and the individuals that paid the ultimate price. Thank you so much, Councilman Freeman. Councilman Neal, did I see your hand? Yes, ma'am, thank you. Um, I just want to say, you know, it's uh, we're already at the end of uh, 2020. The year is going by pretty fast. And I, I've heard um, a lot that was shared. Um, I want to urge us as council to, we've got one day left. Um, uh, and we have council's budget uh, that has uh, dollars that are left in it that can help us address some of the concerns that were spoken of. I mean, we congratulated as we should our, our own Sarah uh, on her accomplishments, uh, congratulations. Um, but but I, I believe there's an opportunity for us to uh, allocate some of those dollars before we uh, roll out of the year on two things, if not three. Uh, one is uh, Councilman Malik mentioned the um, uh, challenges that we have uh, with some budgetary items. I spoke to uh, Mr. Steve Fricker 
our finance department are, they're members of the government office of finance administrators. They offer best practice um, budget um, classes for those who are in finance in city government. Um, spoke to him about us as council, what would it take us to be members? In our discussion, we found it would, we don't need to be members because they're already members, but we can take advantage of those classes. Um, so what I'd like for us to be able to do is next week, because we know we have to allocate those dollars, be bringing in legislation after speaking with Mr. Fricker about us being able to take uh, budget classes. We, we heard about the uh, challenges because of the um, state legislators wanting to uh, address what some call the commuter tax. We've heard the conversation about um, uh, bringing on more debt through bonds. Uh, it, it, we have to, as a council, have an understanding how to better manage our city finances. We have to take advantage of the training that is out there. We can't value it for our police officers, for our clerks, for our safety forces, uh, every other department and not avail ourselves to it. So I wanna um, say that uh, I'd like for us to take a look at that. The other thing is, um, you know, we've talked about policy that adversely impacts our, our uh, community, um, uh, be it by class or by race. Um, I think it would be good for us to lead and join the administration and ask uh, our safety forces and those that serve so that we can normalize this conversation and understand how our policies impact our constituents and go through racial equity training. Uh, that's another area that we could look at with our, the budget dollars that we have left. Um, and then last but not least, um, we've had some constituents ask about being able to engage us as a council. Um, going into, looks like we're going to be in this COVID uh, Zoom type conference. I think we need to look at offering a, a conference call line that our constituents can listen to so that they can have access to our meetings, um, opening up either a conference call, a Zoom number, or Zoom itself. Uh, you can administer so some can talk and some can't. But we've got to give our constituents access uh, to the government. So uh, Madam President, members of council, I'm asking that with, to, with next Monday being our last Monday of the year, I believe it is, that we look at caucusing um, maybe an hour early just to look at council's budget and how we can allocate those dollars because of the way we've written our rules. Um, I'll be reaching out to you, Madam President, to bring in legislation so that we can do that um, because we know after uh, the 14th, those funds roll back into the general fund. Thank you so much, Councilman Neal. Councilwoman Amobian? Yes, thank you, Madam President. Um, first of all, I want to express my, my sorrow and concern about Councilwoman Tarot Samples. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, what has happened has happened to her. However, if we, if these individuals are referring to the ordinance where we asked people to have no more than six individuals outside of their family unit into their home for 30 days. And I think those of us who voted for this, I know that I feel the same way that with the same information, same circumstances, same information from our experts. And I think if you listen to all the governors and other leaders around the country, Everybody is doing pretty much the same thing and telling citizens the same thing, that this deadly virus is being passed around through family gatherings more than anything lately. So we were only trying to protect the citizens. I know I, for one, if I had the same decision to make today, I will vote the same way I did a few weeks ago. With that said, I'm, I'm deeply troubled though by what um, Councilman Malik just shared with us about the water shutoffs. So if there's a way for us to address that next week and do something about that, I had no idea we had those numbers. I realized that the moratorium had been lifted on, on a lot of the, you know, the evictions and water shutoffs and utilities and those things, but I had no idea we had those kinds of numbers. 
So if there's a way for us to address that next week to see if there's something we can do, I certainly would like for us to look at that. So with that said, I hope that somebody can bring some, some possible ways of addressing this from the administration uh, next week. Uh, I know we don't have all of the answers to address all of the problems, but I know the United Way and all these foundations are looking at ways they can help. I mean, this is a major urgent need. If people are in their homes without water, I mean, how can you exist that way? So I hope somebody will come to our aid. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilwoman Mobian. Uh, before we adjourn, I uh, just wanted to make a comment uh, regarding reimagining public safety as we draw close to wrapping up and presenting our recommendations. We started this process um, as a council collectively looking at public safety in the city of Akron. Um, it was really my hope that through this process, council would discover you know, what it is our public safety forces do best. But not only recognize what our public safety workers do best, figure out how we can celebrate and market that um, to the communities in which we represent. It was also our hopes that we would be able to be innovative in our thinking about how we can be better, how we could be more efficient, how we could be more intentional on better supporting our police officers, and how we could address the concerns of our constituents, all while building and repairing relationships between city council and our Akron police, and repairing and building relationships between police and community. And I'm really excited because I think we're moving in the right direction. And I think we have done uh, really all of that. And I think we are truly um, just getting started. We were hoping to be able to release recommendations to this body and to the public on today, but we are still working. Uh, we actually had 21 meetings. Uh, it was actually 21 plus hours of very valuable dialogue and information. And so we are taking our time to go through all that information so that we can be very intentional in making sure that we have heard all of the concerns and issues that were stated uh, in those working groups. So we look forward to being able to roll out those recommendations to council and to the public come the 1st of January, 2021. Also just want to take this opportunity to thank Councilman Malik for all of his work, uh, working with our working groups, taking the time to help us pull together these recommendations. Uh, this is truly going to be uh, something that everyone who was involved in this process really and truly could be proud of. So I just want to thank Councilman Malik for his time uh, in helping us to do that. I also want to take the opportunity to say that we could not have begun to think about or talk about uh, public safety in the city of Akron without the support and cooperation of our Akron police officers. So just want to take the opportunity publicly to thank our Akron police officers, particularly our community liaisons who gave of their time uh, to participate in these working sessions, to give information, to really not only educate um, us as council members, but really the public at large. Oh, we really wanna thank you. Uh, I know it's not easy sometimes having some of these difficult conversations, but I wanna thank you for coming to the table, be, being open and willing. So really can't thank you enough. Um, and, and I think that we're moving in the right direction. Council and our police, you know, we need to be communicating. We need to be talking and continuing the dialogue and communication. When you look back at those 21 meetings, um, there's something that's very clear. City Council and Akron Police have the same priority and that is to make sure that all of our Akron residents are safe. And so collectively working together, that's just one thing that we can make sure that, that happens here in the city of Akron. So just wanna let you know that we are working uh, on those recommendations and we are excited to unveil those recommendations come 2021 and hopefully move into the next phase where we begin to engage uh, the community uh, in reimagining public safety as well. Um, if there's nothing else coming before motion to adjourn. at this time, we have a motion to adjourn. If there's no one who objects, meeting adjourned. This concludes the live broadcast of Akron City Council. Margot Somerville, President of Council, presiding.